Hi guys, it's me Chaz HD and welcome to this incident analysis from the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix and let's just jump into the uh, incidents and I'm going to just analyse what happened from the Grand Prix. Now let's start off with how poor Ferrari were on race day but also how poor their decisions were in terms of team orders and also what tyres they pitted for at certain points of the Grand Prix because they were so poor when it came to their decision making. Let's start off with the team orders. Now, in the first case, Charles Leclerc for about four to five laps in the first stint was clearly being held up by his teammate Sebastian Vettel, as you can see right here. There was no doubt about it. There was even twice where Leclerc had a look at trying to pass Vettel but was not close enough to pass him but you could clearly see that Leclerc was being held up and here's another example of Charles being held up going down into turn one how Ferrari sat there for that long it was nearly 10 minutes I think at one point where they sat there for that long not making what was an obvious decision to let Charles Leclerc pass Sebastian Vettel I don't understand how Ferrari did not clock on to that decision that had to be made. I don't understand how it took Ferrari that long to make that decision. It was so, so obvious. In the race watch along, I was basically screaming for that to happen because it was so, so obvious. But they failed to do so, or failed to make that decision rather, when they needed to. They wasted lap time and they ended up costing themselves a bit of time to Max Verstappen in the Grand Prix itself before the safety car. Uh, eventually, of course, Charles Leclerc was let through by Sebastian Vettel, as you can see right here. But it was, at the time, too little, too late. If he was let through three laps before, Leclerc could have been close enough to Max to be really competitive with Max Verstappen. But because Ferrari were just indecisive with what they wanted to do, that is what happened. They ended up costing themselves quite a bit of time. But then it was roles reversed when Sebastian Vettel uh, pitted and then Charles Leclerc pitted just uh, after Sebastian Vettel. It was roles reversed. Vettel was now stuck behind Charles Leclerc and Vettel was clearly for it seemed as though longer compared to when Vettel was holding up Leclerc earlier on and again it was so so obvious to see that Charles Leclerc was holding up Sebastian Vettel and again I don't understand how Ferrari took so long to see that that was the decision that had to be made. I mean, for example, this is in turn four. How, how is this not holding yourselves up? Look how close Sebastian Vettel is. He's clearly losing lap time and destroying his front tyres because he's still stuck behind his teammate who is on harder tyres and is going quite slowly. How, Ferrari, can you be that slow and indecisive with making such a simple decision that most teams would make pretty quickly it's not very hard uh he did of course Charles Leclerc let Vettel through into turn five but again it was too little too late because Vettel pitted a few laps later um and really in the time he was behind Charles Leclerc he really did hurt his front tyres so it did again hurt the team in terms of time compared to Max Verstappen and time that they were losing just with themselves but now let's go on to the team strategy and we'll start off with Sebastian Vettel now after Vettel let Leclerc through in the first stint you could obviously see that Sebastian Vettel was struggling with his tyres. He had tyre vibrations after the lockup on the first lap. Now, it has come out that Sebastian Vettel was saying to the team on team radio for 
Ferrari to pit him because he felt as though his tyres were way too badly worn and he couldn't produce any good amounts of lap time at the time with the tyres he had. And again, Ferrari were indecisive, very slow with the decision making and didn't really respond to what Vettel wanted to do. Now, you can say, well, sometimes drivers can't call the shots behind the wheel. But when a driver is telling you, my tyres are dead, I can't do any more than this, we need to pit, you should pit. The driver is the one driving the car. He knows how the car feels. You should listen to that driver. So Ferrari, with Vettel, you have to say, very late in calling him into the pits. They should have called him into the pits. I would say, considering he did a two-stop, he should have pitted two to three laps after he let Charles Leclerc through in the first stint. But they waited about five laps too long when it came to pitting Vettel. But the weirdest one is the tyres that Charles Leclerc went on to after his first pit stop. He went from soft tyres to the hard compound tyre. Now, if no one had used them before in the Grand Prix, you could argue that, uh, you know, they don't know what the tyres are going to do. They think it'll do well, but maybe they're not expecting it to be as bad as it was. That's wrong because Antonio Giovinazzi pitted on about lap seven from the soft tyres to go onto the hard tyres to try and go to the end and also jump quite a few people. And it was basically proven by the time Charles Leclerc came into the pits that the hard tyre was a bad tyre to be on. It also proved to be quite bad for Daniel Ricciardo uh, in the middle stint of the Grand Prix. So there was absolutely no reason for Ferrari to put Charles Leclerc on the hard tyre. And to be honest, when it came to the second team order situation, they caused that because... If they put Leclerc on a set of medium tyres, Leclerc could have pulled away from Vettel once again. But because he was on the hard tyres, which were performing so poorly in the Grand Prix, he couldn't go any faster. So Ferrari really shooting themselves in the foot. Terrible Grand Prix. Their decision making was at times terrible. And when they did make the right decision, it was way, way too late. They really do, as a team, lack good leadership. The people that are in control of the race strategy are terrible. And Inaki Rueda should be sacked. The guy has been awful when it comes to strategy for a Grand Prix ever since he was hired for Ferrari in 2016. How he still has a job, I will never, ever know. He has to go and Ferrari have to restructure, I think some of the management in that team. But now let's analyse the crash between Lando Norris and Lance Stroll, which caused the safety car during the Spanish Grand Prix of 2019. And I'm going to show why Stroll was at fault for this crash. So going down into turn one, you can see Stroll is defending to the inside. Norris has a good run on Stroll and decides to break around the outside for turn one and try and get the inside for turn two and then the outside again for turn three. Now going around the outside at turn one is definitely a fair move. We've seen overtakes there before and it's definitely possible to make it work. And if I move on to this picture, you can see on the, or in the middle rather of turn one, Norris has half of his car alongside Lance Stroll. He has enough of his car alongside to deserve space and to, I think, really make this move work going down into turn two. But as they get to turn two, as you can see here, Norris still has half of his car, if not three quarters of his car alongside Stroll. But Stroll at this point is starting to turn in and is now pinching Norris on the inside of the corner. And Norris really doesn't have anywhere to go. But making contact with the Racing Point driver. And then you can see here. Right before the contact. Stroll unfairly is turning in. Norris has nowhere to go. 
Norris still has half of his car alongside. And really, Stroll has to give Norris space because he has enough of his car alongside and deserves that space, but Stroll just doesn't give him any. And then this is the point of contact. Again, Norris couldn't do anything. You can see there on the steering wheel, Norris is trying to turn left to avoid it happening, but Stroll basically turned straight into Lando Norris and took himself and Norris out of this Grand Prix. And then Stroll spun off into the gravel and Norris, I believe, had a broken suspension. But for me, definitely Stroll was at fault because he turned in to Lando Norris when Norris had enough of his car alongside and caused the accident to happen. So for me, Lance Stroll clearly at fault for that crash. But now let's go on to our final uh, topic of this video. And it is the hard racing and contact between the two Haas drivers on the restart of the Grand Prix after the safety car came in. Uh, so you can see here the two Haas cars behind Leclerc and Gasly side by side coming down into turn one. And then here Magnussen is starting to pull ahead. Now I do need to stress I don't understand why Haas let their two drivers race because they were P7 and P8 and they should have been working as a team to get the points that they really should have got from that Grand Prix considering the pace that car did have. So I really do think Haas were poor in terms of their pit wall in not telling the drivers that, you know, don't race, hold position, make sure you get the points because those are vital for our season. But they didn't do that. And of course, this ended up happening. And I think Haas definitely, and Gunter Steiner really, could have prevented this from happening if he just made a simple radio call to Kevin Magnussen saying, look, Kevin, please don't race Roman. Please hold position. We desperately do need these points. But he didn't do that, of course. And this racing did occur. Now, if you actually look at the racing down into turn one uh, on lap, I think it was lap 53. Kevin Magnussen wasn't actually massively at fault because you can see here, Kevin has most of his car ahead. And then here, he has almost all of his car ahead. And this is the point where Grosjean's right front hit Magnussen's left rear. I think K-Mag here pretty much does have the move done. And I think the only reason the contact happened was because Roman turned in um, to turn one a bit earlier than he should have. And he should have allowed Kevin to just go straight through and then try and follow Kevin for the next lap or so. So I think, honestly, when it came to the contact, I think Roman was at, uh, more at fault for that than Kevin. I think Kevin did, in terms of a racing type of move, I think Kevin did absolutely everything fine. Put it down the inside, had most of his car ahead, had the line, but Grosjean, I think, caused the contact. But thankfully for that team, it did not mean that they had any bad damage or anything like that. But there you go, guys. That is my analysis of the key incidents from the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about these incidents? And also, what do you think about my opinion of these certain incidents from the Spanish Grand Prix. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget to hit the like button for more videos like this as well. And until next time, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.